Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Bear Arms Reference Collection up in Scottsdale, Arizona, also site of one of our National Strategic Ammo Reserves, and we're taking a look at an FN FAL, specifically a G1. This is the German military version of the FAL. There are, the FAL is of course known as the right arm of the free world. It was adopted by a tremendous number of countries. A lot of those rifles are pretty much standard production models from FN, but some of them, like the G1, are really fundamental development parts of the FAL story and have some unique features to them. So the G1 being one of those, I figured we should take a pretty good close look at one of these. Now, these rifles were actually not first purchased by the German army. They were first purchased for the German Federal Border Guards, the Bundesgrenschutz. Hopefully I've got that pronunciation even somewhere close to right. Um, basically, in the couple of years right after World War II, the, the late 1940s, the Franco-Anglo-American Allied Coalition has decided that Germany is going to be a perpetually disarmed nation. Like, we're sick of dealing with them invading all the rest of Europe. We had enough. Like, this ends here. No more guns for any of you. But after a couple of years, that policy softens a bit because, well, it's West Germany now, and then there's an East Germany, and there's a whole lot of communists, like, right there. And the French and the Americans and the British aren't really necessarily sure that they want to be the ones patrolling this whole border for the rest of perpetual time, and so, well, maybe we can let the Germans do it. And so, in 1951, the BGS, the Bundesgrenzschutz, Grenzschutz, uh, was formed. And this was going to be a 10,000 man unit uh, or organization that would patrol the borders of Germany. It was ostensibly a police organization, but in reality it's a paramilitary group. Most of the men recruited into it were ex-Wehrmacht combat vets from World War II, because hey, they know soldiering pretty well, they're available, a lot of those guys are still looking for employment after the war. Bring them into the new Federal Border Guides, that's a good place. And the unit is armed with basically all the same equipment that the, the Wehrmacht had, because that's what was around. They had K98Ks, interestingly, a lot of them new production, uh, French occupation production Mauser K98Ks, but they had those, they had Stahlhelms, they had MG42s, you name it. Well, the K98K is clearly kind of an obsolete weapon, there's a lot of new stuff coming around the corner, and of course right about this time NATO is adopting its own new standardized cartridge, the 7.62 by 51 millimeter. And the BGS, as Germany's only armed force at this point, we're talking early 1950s, starts looking into a new, a new individual rifle for their soldiers. They test out the Spanish Setme, they test out the FN Fal, they spend about six months in late 1955, early uh, 1956, testing the Fal in field conditions with the BGS troops. They decide that it is in fact the superior rifle, they have no further interest in the Setme, and they go ahead and place an order for uh, uh, 2,000 of the Fowl. And this would be what's called the pattern A. There are going to be three patterns we'll go through here, the A, the B, and the C. The A pattern looks a bit different than this. It has wood handguards, it doesn't have a bipod, it has a fixed flash hider on it. It's basically just a standard Belgian production model Fowl. In uh, the fall of 1956, a second follow-up order is placed for another 4,800 rifles. This is going to go most of the way towards re-equipping the BGS. That would be the B pattern, and it's going to look basically like this. Uh, not exactly, but they incorporate a number of other changes, most substantially, most visibly. They replace the wood handguard with a metal handguard, and they give it this folding bipod. Now if you've looked at a lot of fouls, you're like, yeah, that's a foul bipod, what's the big deal? Well. The BGS is actually the first organization to request and get a bipod like this. It would go on to be a relatively common feature on other countries' purchases of the FAL, but it originates with the Germans. Now at this same time the attitude towards German rearmament is shifting more, and in 1955 the Bundeswehr is formed, and this would be West Germany's actual legitimate national military force. It's the new army. And of course the, Wehr the, 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 Wehrmacht, the Bundeswehr is going to need new arms. And so they also look at what's going on, they see that the BGS, they've looked at the BGS trials of the FAL, they do some of their own testing, they decide, yeah, the FAL is a great rifle, it's the way to go. At this point 
the foul has been adopted by a bunch of major countries. Uh, the Canadians have adopted it, the UK has adopted it, the Belgians have adopted it, uh, you've got some other smaller countries, the Israelis, uh, Par Paraguay, Argentina. I like guess uh, the US, by the way, is in the middle of testing it, and things are looking like the US is probably going to adopt this rifle as well, at least from a European perspective. And so it's really kind of a, an obvious choice to make. It's a good gun. It's going to be a NATO standard thing, clearly. Let's go with that. And so the Bundeswehr orders 100,000 of them, uh, dwarfing all of the former border guard orders. And that Bundeswehr order is considered the Type C. And there are a couple other little changes that are brought in with the Type C. So this is a this is a Bundeswehr Type C rifle that. After the Bundeswehr stopped using them, and we'll get to that in a few minutes, uh, the Bundeswehr rifles were transferred to the Federal Border Guards, to the BGS, and they would be used by the BGS for a fairly long while before ultimately being surplused out to other places. So what we have here is a rifle that was originally Bundeswehr, later used by BGS, and it has a couple elements of both. So let's take a closer look at it, and let me show you what distinguishes the German G1 pattern of foul from the other fouls out there. I want to start by taking a close look at the markings here. It's interesting to note that all of the G1 rifles, both the BGS contract and the Bundeswehr contract, they're not actually marked G1. They are marked Gewehr Caliber 7.62mm FN. In German terminology, this wasn't originally the Gewehr G1. This was the Gewehr Fabrique Nationale, the Gewehr FN, and that's how they were all originally marked. Um, the nomenclature would eventually go to uh, the Gewehr DM1, which I believe was Deutsches Modell 1, and then eventually settle on G1 rifle uh, before the G3 was adopted, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, now we have our serial number back here. There were 100,000 of these made. The C suffix indicates that this was used by the BGS, the German Federal Police. They uh, noted the guns that were updated to their C pattern. Um, when they came into uh, BGS service. Now the keen-eyed foul folks will have immediately noticed, and are probably already madly typing in the comments, that this is wrong, because this is a Type 2 receiver. The extra reinforcing metal right here should not be present on this rifle. Um, this should have a Type 1 receiver where this cutout comes just clear straight across right there. This style of receiver did not go into production until the mid-1960s, and the entire Bundeswehr order was manufactured by the end of 1958 and delivered. Uh, this particular rifle stayed in Europe until the 1980s, we'll get to that as well. And as best I can tell, this is actually a field, well not field, an armory replacement receiver. Uh, that when the, the rifle was overhauled, the upper receiver had to be replaced, and when it was, it was replaced with a part that was more modern in production, um, that had been sold to Germany as a spare part. So that's why we have an anomalous receiver here. There are a few of these known. In general, the Gewehr FNs all have Type 1 receivers. Uh, this does have matching serial numbers everywhere, like barrel, flash hider, the works, which is really cool. Um, you'll notice it has S, E, and D as selector markings. This is safe Einzelfeuer, or semi-auto, and Dauerfeuer, or uh, repeat fire. The original BGS A and B pattern guns were marked S, E, F, and D, F. It is the Bundeswehr that simplified the markings. That's a pretty subtle change, uh, but it is something that's interesting to note, and allows you to differentiate the original BGS purchase from the original Bundeswehr purchase. One of the other changes that was made when the Bundeswehr decided to order these rifles was to lower the line of the iron sights by all of three millimeters. This is really a fairly inconsequential change from a practical perspective, and the Belgians were quick to point that out. Like, really, you want to lower the sights three millimeters? Like, we have to we have to change the machining on a bunch of parts for something that doesn't really seem all that important. And the German procurement general involved made a comment about how, like. Apparently, uh, a three millimeter difference in taking a headshot can mean the difference between wounding the enemy and killing them. And so, yes, we need that three millimeters. And so the Belgians basically went, okay, fine, whatever, you're buying 100,000 rifles, we'll just deal with it. And um, as a result, 
the, the front and rear sights are lowered all of three millimeters. This would actually go on to be sort of a standard uh, style in later foul production, and it's more visibly evident here on the front sight than on the rear, but that is one of the very small differences between the Bundeswehr and the BGS orders. And just to round things out, on the right side of the receiver we have FN's pretty standard roll mark. It is the full length one, Fabrique Nationale des Hommes de Guerre, Herstel Belgique. Uh, they would later shorten that marking. But these are all pretty early production guns, where these were all made in 1957 and 1958. Now let's go through the rifle from end to end and take a look at the various features. We have a metal butt plate here with a trap door in it, that is for storing a cleaning kit. These rifles were fitted with wooden butt stocks and wooden pistol grips, although later in their service life, uh, when they went through depot repair, many of them would be uh, updated to a plastic pistol grip. Um, this particular rifle actually had a plastic pistol grip when it came into the US. I swapped it out for the wooden one, sort of to give a more original look to, to the rifle for the sake of video, but this is the pistol grip that was on it, because that was a later update when these were put into production. We have the standard, albeit low as I just discussed, uh, foul rear aperture sight with settings for 2, 3, 4, 5, and 600 meters, and that just slides in and out. The Bundeswehr and the BGS both wanted carry handles, folding carry handles on the rifles, and so those were included. Um, some of these rifles, by the way, some of the later production ones will actually have a NATO stock number, and some of them will also have a date here in the, the mill cutout on the side of the magazine well. This particular one does not. However, I will point out, uh, by the way, totally standard foul magazines, 20 round capacity. The German ones can be identified, if I can get the light in there right. There we go, because they also have a NATO stock number. So 1005 means small arms, 13 means this was made in Belgium, and then 100 02 0225 uh, is the specific inventory number for magazines. So, sorry, update. That's how we can identify this as a Belgian made German contract magazine. The controls are all totally standard FAL, so this is our magazine release. Press in, rotate forward. To insert the magazine on a foul you nose this in, and then rock it back. Uh, also point out that these are metric pattern magazines. So the metric ones have a little uh, front latch on the magazine that's just a pressing that's pushed out of the magazine body itself. Inch pattern guns, which are the, the British and Commonwealth guns, will have a much larger milled lug on the front of the magazine. This is our bolt hold open and release, so if I pull the bolt back I can push this up, lock it in place. Uh, Non-reciprocating charging handle with a solid handle. Other patterns of the foul will have a folding handle, the G1s did not. If I pull this down it releases the bolt. A chunk like that. And then the three position selector we already talked about. We have the metal handguard that I already talked about, plus this very simple uh, folding bipod. You've got little spike feet on the end of the bipod. There is no actual like positive latch on this, it's just spring tension that holds that in place. So you can see there's a spring inside this plunger, that's going to push up into that notch to lock it well, to hold it in the vertical position, and then the same happens when it is folded down. Uh, so you can push into this a little bit, if you try and push into the bipod too aggressively it will fold up on you. And then the bipod does have a little bit of uh, pivot to it, less so when it's folded in place like this. But if I open that up you can see the amount of pivot that you get. Now the muzzle device on these is pretty cool. Uh, they were not originally ordered with bayonets, there wasn't really a need seen for a bayonet, but they do have this cool interchangeable sort of multi-purpose muzzle device. And this one is a flash hider, so it's very similar to the, like the American T-48 pattern, five prong enclosed flash hider. But this device is removable. So there's a little flat spring here that is locking this over the rifle's bayonet lug, and if I pry that up I can rotate this around and slide it off. And you can see that the bayonet lug is actually still there on the barrel from FN. 
And what we have is this slip-on device to act as a flash hider. And they also had replacement slip-on uh, blank firing adapters and rifle grenade launchers. So you could kind of outfit the rifle with whichever uh, accessory you wanted. Now this is a pretty early one, um, I believe. It is serial number matched to the gun, and it's a little tricky to get this thing off. You will also find these with this wire, which is easily taken to have something to do with rifle grenade retention. That is actually a wire that you loop out, and you can use uh, to get some leverage to pull that flat spring out to remove the muzzle device. So this is a one off a different rifle. But. And then to reinstall this, we're just going to slap it on there with this on the top, and then rotate it around and it will snap in place. Click right there. Disassembly here is just like every other foul. Um, this is an early pattern, being 19, late 1950s. So we have a disassembly catch that is here. You pull that back and it unlocks the upper from the lower. Uh, later patterns they discovered that this could wear and could bounce on recoil, and so they'd replace them with a horizontal uh, lever instead, but not on the G1s. Once you have the receiver pivoted open, you can then pull out the bolt carrier. The recoil spring is inside the buttstock. You've got a little plunger right there connected to the recoil spring, and this tail on the bolt carrier is going to press on that and reciprocate down into the stock when the rifle cycles. The FAL is a tilting bolt rifle, so when it is cycling it is in this position. When it's locked in place it's in this position. That is the locking surface right there, which drops down into the locking recess, is actually right here. That's your locking shoulder, which is an interchangeable or replaceable part in the receiver. It of course is heat treated separately so that it can be hardened properly to be a locking surface. We can take off the handguards very easily by just removing this one screw at the front. Open up the bipod and our two handguard halves come right off. That allows us to see the front of the gas system. This is a short stroke gas piston. It has adjustable, uh, an adjustable gas port here, and it also has an adjustable gas plug, currently set to A, which is for rifle fire. There is a little slot machined in the front there so that you can turn this using the rim of a cartridge. Although I'm going to do it with a screwdriver. What we do is push this button in, and we can then rotate this over 180 degrees to the GR setting, which as you might guess cuts off all gas to use as a rifle grenade launcher. That way you can set your adjustable uh, gas port, and rather than trying to click it all the way down to zero, fire a rifle grenade, and then hope you remember exactly what position you had it set on, you set this once, and then you can flip this back and forth for grenade launching. For disassembly we just rotate this the other direction, and the gas port or the gas plug itself comes out. That one probably could use some cleaning. So there's your shutoff side, there's your gas port side, and then you have a gas piston and its return spring that live right up here in the gas tube. So this end of the gas piston is going to push on the very top of the bolt carrier right there. Now you may be thinking, like, the Germans don't use the FAL, the Germans use the HK G3, right? That's G3, Gewehr 3, it's the German rifle. And that is true, the Germans adopted, the Bundeswehr adopted the G3 in 1959, after having adopted the G1, the FN FAL, uh, for several years beforehand. There were issues, uh, the primary issue was one of licensed production. The Belgians were quite happy to sell the Germans some rifles, but they were not willing to grant the Germans a production license to build them on their own. The Belgians, for understandable reasons, liked having some element of control over German small arms equipment and being able to cut off that supply if the Germans did something obnoxious like invade Belgium again. again. Uh, this of course caused some friction. 
and ultimately the Bundeswehr would decide to adopt the Spanish Setme as the G3 because it was a rifle that they could very easily get production rights to, and Rheinmetall and Heckler and & Koch would both start manufacturing G3s in Germany. And so the Bundeswehr, with its 100,000 G1 fouls, uh, they used them for a number of years. Once they adopted the G3, they started to offload the fouls, the G1s, onto organizations like the BGS, sort of the second line uh, organizations. The BGS would use these, I believe, into the 1970s, uh, which is why this one has a replacement later pattern receiver on it. And then ultimately the guns were sold off. Uh, most of them apparently were surplused to Turkey, they floated around. A lot of them ended up in the US as parts kits eventually. So you will see this configuration of rifle in the US uh, built up on American-made receivers. Now this particular one is actually a registered pre-86 dealer sample, came into the US in the 1980s in this configuration, less the pistol grip, which I swapped out uh, for the video, but uh, pretty rare to find one with like the actual original Belgian-made German-marked receivers. So that's the, the backstory on this particular one. Anyway, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this look at the G1 pattern of foul. A big thanks uh, to Bear Arms for giving me access to this guy to film for you. Thanks for watching.